Hi DIYers, Sterling with Alarm Grid here. Today we're going to show you how to program a 2 gig PIR1-345 wireless motion detector to our 2 gig Go Control panel. Motion detector is one of the most common items used with an alarm system and will detect entry when motion is activated by this device. This is a PIR motion, meaning passive infrared. So that's the type of technology that this detector uses to detect motion. Passive infrared means that this detector is looking for a change in passive infrared energy in the room. So you may have heard how motions work and a lot of people have misconceptions about really how it's working. Um, bottom line is it's looking for a change in passive infrared energy that could be a temperature change. Um, you know, a human body has a different temperature than the ambient temperature in the room. Um, and basically once it sees that change, it's going to activate the alarm, trigger this system. So motions are a great way to cover an entire room. It doesn't matter how the criminal gets into the room. As soon as they get in and hit the motion area, an alarm is triggered. So now that we've described how the PIR1 works, we're going to get into programming on the Go Control and show you how to add this sensor to your system. So whenever doing programming on the 2 gig Go Control, first thing we always do is security. Once we do that, we hit Menu, Toolbox, and we have to enter our installer code. By default, it's 1561, so as long as you haven't changed it, just key that in, 1561, and now we're into our toolbox, page one of three. Hitting the right arrow twice gets us to our installer toolbox option, and then we hit system configuration to get to the programming parameters for the system. Question number one in the Go Control programming is always select RF sensor number. So basically we have 48 wireless zones that we can program to our system, or 48 sensors, and it defaults to 0, 1 on the sub-level. That means zone number 1. We have no other zones programmed to the panel. We want to learn in our motion on our first available zone. So we hit the right, or I'm sorry, we hit the down arrow. If we hit the right arrow, it will go to zone 2. So if we already had programmed a zone 1 sensor, we would hit the right arrow to go ahead and add in our next device, our motion. In our, perp in our case, we only have this device, uh, or rather we haven't done any device, so we're going to go ahead and do the down arrow on 0, 1. Now we're on the question, select RF sensor type. And this is asking you, how do you want this sensor to act or respond? If you hit the right arrow, you will be uh, scrolling through the various sensor types. Now on doors and windows, you normally would do entry exit 1 or entry exit 2 or perimeter. For a motion detector, you're going to want to do interior follower or interior with delay. So it's going to be option number 4 or option number 10. And this uh, difference between interior follower and interior with delay can be a little confusing, so I wanted to stop a moment and describe both options. Interior follower means this will be an instant alarm when activated. If someone smashes through a window that's not protected with a sensor and hits this motion before they hit anything else, instant alarm, okay? Now the key is the follower portion. That means it will follow a delay of a device that was triggered previous to the motion. So, if you have this in your living room, your keypad is by your kitchen, and you have to open your front door, which is a delay zone, pass through your living room on the way to your kitchen. If this was going to activate instantly, no matter when it was triggered, you would have a false alarm every time you come home and disarm your system. So, the follower aspect knows to put the motion into the same delay as the device that was triggered first. So once the front door, which is programmed as a delay zone, is violated, now the motion is following that delay of the door, and then when you pass in front of the motion, it's not going to trigger the alarm, and as long as you get to the keypad and disarm it within the programmed entry delay, you won't have a false alarm. So that's what interior follower means. Interior with delay means that it's always on delay. No matter what, you will have the entry delay period before this sensor will trigger an alarm. So the two differences is whether it'll have a delay or not. We would rather have it not have a delay because it's more secure. We don't want to give a criminal time in our house before the alarm is triggered unless we have to. So interior follower is the best option to use in most situations. 
If this motion looks directly at an entry or exit zone, meaning that the entry exit door opening, the physical door opening would trigger this motion, the system doesn't have enough time to follow the delay and therefore the door opening instantly triggers the motion as an immediate alarm. So the motions that look directly at an entry exit door need to be programmed entry with delay or I'm sorry interior with delay. Alright so again interior follower for most motions interior with delay with the motions that look at an entry exit door. So this one in our case does not look at an entry exit door we're gonna do interior follower and we are good to advance to the next screen. Either interior follower or interior with delay, the other key aspect of a motion is that when arming to stay mode as, a, as opposed to away mode, the motions are automatically disabled by the system. So if you're in the house, you arm to stay, the motions are turned off, you can walk throughout your property without triggering your motions. When you leave to exit the home, you arm to away, the motions will be on the zones that are programmed interior follower or interior with delay will be off in stay mode. Down arrow to accept that option and now we're on the question sensor one equipment type. Because we programmed an interior uh, sensor type it automatically went to the equipment type of motion. And if we hit the down arrow then we get to the actual equipment code and if we scroll to the right we can do PIR with pet immunity. There's an option for pet immunity um, or rather there are motions that have pet immunity and some that don't. So in this case we want the option for PIR with pet immunity because the PIR1 will be pet immune up to 35 pounds or 55 pounds depending on how this jumper is set on the motion. So this equipment code is just telling the system the actual model number or type of device being used for this motion. We hit the down arrow to advance to the next screen and we can now key in the serial number or the transmission ID number that this motion uses to talk to any system that it's programmed for. So on every 2 gig wireless device there is a TX ID number on a sticker. Sometimes the sticker is internally in the device, sometimes it's on the outside. For the motion it's on the inside. So you can key this 7 digit number in with the keypad 027. 4099 or you can clear that out. So instead of typing the serial number the other way and the recommended way to enroll the sensor is with the auto enrollment process. The reason it's recommended is because it verifies two things. It verifies the sensor is working and it verifies that we're not going to mistype the serial number which would cause us a problem when we go to test the sensor and it doesn't work. We would have to come back and check to make sure we have that seven digit number right. So to do the auto enrollment with any uh, wireless device you always have to hit shift and then learn. Now on a door contact it's easy to activate, you just m uh, pull the magnet away from the sensor. On the motion it's a little bit harder. Right now we've had the battery in but um, it's not lighting up. So what we would do is we would remove the battery, reinsert it as a brand new installation and hit the tamper button. Now it takes about 10 seconds for the device to, to wake up after you hit the tamper button which is this little black tab here and now when we flip it around waving our hand in front of it this LED lights up and we're going to get a valid transmission of the device which will auto enroll the sensor to the panel. So you saw, I mean, some, sometimes it's auto enrollment. I mean, the first time might not tr trick it, but trigger it, but basically we got the LED to light by waving our hand in front of the motion and it auto enrolled the correct serial number, 0274099. We hit OK to learn it in and we hit the down arrow to advance and lock in our serial number and advance to the next screen. So now that we've locked in the serial number, the next question is equipment age. This is a very basic question. Is this a new sensor or is it a sensor that's been in the house already? This information isn't so relevant for you, the homeowner, but it's helpful for us, the alarm company, so that we know did we take this system over and this is an old existing motion that someone else sold them? Or is this a brand new sensor that we sold them? In which case, if there was ever a problem, 
of course we're going to help you get a brand new sensor. So just choose whether it's new or old. For our case it's brand new, we hit the down arrow and we've locked in our new device. Now we have loop number. Nearly every single 2 gig wireless device gets a loop number one, so we hit the down arrow. And now we're on dial delay. What this means is if this motion is activated and sounds the alarm at the panel, does that send a transmission to our central station right away? Or does it send that transmission only after the program dial delay? The dial delay of the panel is how long in seconds the system waits before it sends out the alarm to the central station. We always recommend that you disable, by hitting the right arrow, your dial delay. That way any alarm is sent immediately to the central station. We use call verification with our central station so that we're going to call you if there was ever an alarm and therefore if you hit it by accident and it was a false alarm, you would simply answer the phone, provide your false alarm passcode, and then you don't have to worry about us dispatching the authorities. So, while it helps to avoid false alarms, we think it's a little bit excessive to make the system wait to send the alarm. We let the central station operators handle that, por that uh, procedure to avoid the false alarms. So again, we recommend going with a disabled dial delay. Hit the down arrow and now we are able to construct our RF sensor 1 voice descriptor. And this is an option that we can use to program what will be said or shown on the screen if this sensor was faulted in the disarm state or activated in the alarm state. So if you had more than one motion, now you know this is the living room motion versus the kitchen motion versus the family room motion. And the way that you put in your descriptor is you hit insert and it puts you to the first available word in the library. So when you're naming your zone, you have to select a word from the library. You can hit the arrow to go from A all the way to Z. By going left, you're starting at Z. By going right, you're going through the A's. The other option is to type in a three-digit number which will equate to a word. And we have this information on our website about what three-digit number will equate to each word. It's also included with your 2 gig Go Control panel in our sheet that has our voice descriptor library. So there's a library of all the words. The motion word is 146, so we could just put 146 if we were only going to have one motion in the house. We plan to have more than one, so we're going to do living, 133. Three. If we hit insert, we're able to put another word. Room happens to be 187, so now we have living room. And then finally, we call it a motion. You can do 146, which is motion, or you could do 147, which is motion detector. And I accidentally had gotten rid of our room. So if I change that back to the room code, which was 187, and then insert, now again, motion detector, 147. So living room motion detector. You could do up to five total words. And if any word gives you two words with one three-digit code, that's considered one word. So even though it's motion detector, we still have room for two more. In our case, living room motion detector is as descriptive as we need to make it. So we hit the down arrow to go to the next screen. Now this is select the wireless sensors report option. Will an alarm transmission from this device that activates the panel send out to the alarm uh, central station? So we talked about delaying that transmission. This question is whether or not that transmission ever goes out. In our case, we do want it to be enabled because we have our system monitored with a central station. So we want to make sure it's enabled. If you were using this as a local system just to sound a loud noise in the house, you could disable that so it doesn't try to send out to a central station. The next question is supervision. Do we want to know when this, panel, when this device has a low battery or if this device is not being seen by the panel? So this will send out regular uh, check-in messages to the, si to the sensor and be able to see that, yes, the battery is low and report a low battery, so you know you have to replace the battery on the motion immediately. Or if it's a supervision issue, which is a range issue, then perhaps uh, something environmentally is interfering with the signal path between this and the panel, and perhaps something in the environment's changed and we have to relocate our motion or we have to move our room around. In our case, we always want to have a protected device or a protected zone like a motion be supervised so that we would know about low battery errors or range issues. 
So we hit the down arrow to lock in enabled, and now we're on our chime question. Now chime would be alerting with a voice or um, audible noise from the system when this device faults. A fault is an activation in the disarm state. So if you're disarmed and your door opens, it can chime and tell you front door. With a motion, and we're going to be walking throughout the house, we don't really want that to chime in the disarm state. I mean, there could be applications where you do, but the vast majority of the time you would not want your motion to trigger or chime, and otherwise you'd have the panel beeping at you all day long as you walk around. So we're going to leave that disabled on a motion detector and hit the down arrow. Now we're on our summary screen and we can review all of the settings that we learned in. We chose device type interior follower. That means it's going to be off and stay mode, on and away mode. It will be an instant alarm unless a delay zone was triggered first, in which case it will follow that delay and become a delayed zone as well. We have it set as a motion and we have it set as a 2 gig pet immune motion because that's what it is. We have our serial number. We have that it's a brand new device. We have loop number one, which is the proper loop when programming our PIR1-345 2 gig sensor. We have our dial delay disabled so that the alarm transmissions from this go out to the central station immediately. We have our nice descriptive living room motion detector for our voice descriptor. And we have reports enabled. Yes, we want alarms from this to go to our central station. We have it supervised. Yes, we want to know about low battery issues and range issues. And finally, chime. No, we do not want to hear chimes from this device in the disarm state. So we are now good to lock in our settings by hitting skip, which takes us to the next question in system programming. Question number one is wireless zone programming. Okay, all zones 0, 1 to 48 are all within question number one. And now we're on question number two, which is asking us to program our one of two wired zones. We're not going to use our wired zone, so we're just going to hit end. All we wanted to do was program our motion. And now we're on our summary of system configuration, which if we made other changes, we could review. In our case, we didn't make changes. So we simply hit exit. And don't be, don't be alarmed by that happening. Anytime you make programming change to your 2 gig and save the option and exit, the system is going to reboot. You'll hear it say a voice descriptor um, or, or a voice message when it's coming back on. It just takes a few seconds. Ready to arm. System disarm, ready to arm is what it just said. And now a few seconds later we have our screen again and our motion is now learned into our 2 gig go control. So that is the, the um, 2 gig PIR1-345 programming method. And we hope you've enjoyed that video. We invite you to subscribe to our channel. And if you have any questions when programming your PIR1, please email support at alarmgrid.com.